So for this question, we have the same three charges, but now they're in a different orientation. So again, Q3 is still 5 nanocoulombs. Q1 is still going to be 1 nanocoulomb. And Q2 is negative 3 nanocoulombs. So we're trying to find out what is going to happen to Q3 again. So we have some lengths. So we know that Q1 and Q2 are 6 centimeters apart. And there's a horizontal distance of 4 centimeters. So we can just do a little bit of trigonometry. So I have to do theta is equal to inverse tan of 3 over 4. So inverse tan of 3 divided by 4, we get an angle. And that comes out to be theta is 37 degrees. So that means this angle right here, that is 37 degrees. Same as this one. That's also 37 degrees. Now, before we start, just make sure we understand, we want to think about this, what direction is this force going to be? So let's look at Q1 and Q3. So first of all, those are both positive charges. So that means that we know that like charges are going to repel. So this one is going to, Q1 will try to make Q3 go in this direction. So F1 on 3. So F1 on 3 is trying to push it to the down to the right at that angle theta that we found. F2, F2 though is an opposite charge from Q3. So Q2 is opposite charge from Q3. So opposite charges attract. So we know that F2 on 3 is going to pull it towards it. So like so it's going to, and the reason I drew this vector to be larger is because Q2 is just a, simply a larger magnitude and charge compared to Q1. So this is going to be F2 on 3. So we know that from vector addition, if I have Q3, some Q3, now if I know there's two forces acting on 1 and 2, if I do vector addition, so again, if I take either vector, so for example, if I take, if I, there's F1 on 3, I go F2 on 3 plus F1 on 3, or I can do F1 on 3 plus F2 on 3, doesn't matter which direction we add those two together, we can see a resultant vector is this pink vector that is drew somewhere off in that direction. So we are trying to find out what is the magnitude of that pink vector I just drew, plus what is the direction it's traveling in. So let's solve for our two values. So we have F1 on 3. So I'm just looking, so right now I'm just, there's charge 1 and charge 3, and those are the only thing that exist in the world right now. So I know F is equal to KQQ over R squared. So we have 9 times 10 to the 9, and the charge is 1 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. The other one is 5 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. And they are a distance of 5 centimeters apart, so that's 0 0.05 meters. We're going to square that. Plug it into our calculators, we have 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. Now we're looking at 2 on 3. It's pretty much the exact same formula. We have that. 9 times 10 to the 9, but the only difference though, instead of having a charge of 1, magnitude 1, it's a magnitude of 3. Same distance away, 0 0.05 meters. So we get a value of just, that's going to be just 3 times bigger, because the, the only thing that's different in these two equations is the charge is 3 times larger. So 1.8 times 3 is just 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5. Now you notice I haven't put any signs like positive or negative right now because if I write down positive or negative, it doesn't really tell me that much. All it really tells me is the attractive force or is, it, or is the repelling force. But now I have to take these two numbers and we have to vectorally combine them just like we have in previous unit of vectors. So what that means is we need to find out what is the sum of the forces in the x direction or the sum of the forces in the y direction. So F1 and 3, we can see that that has an X and a Y component, and F2 and 3 has an X and a Y component. So I think that some of the forces in the X direction. So we look at F1 on 3, that is, that's the right. So we think of right as positive, and up as positive. 
So f1 and 3, that force is pushing to the right. So it's going to be a positive 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. And I need to multiply it by cos 37 because that's the angle it's acting in. Now the other force, F2 and 3, it has a negative x component. So I'm going to subtract a 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons cos 37 as well. Combine this together, we get a value of negative 2.9 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. Now we look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. For this one, they're both going downwards. So if up is positive, I can say, okay, negative 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. And we want the sine component, we want the y component. We have minus 5.4 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. And we have sine 37. So we end up with a value of negative 4.3 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. So you know it's going down negative 4.3, and it's going to the left negative 2.9. So if I just redraw this picture off on the left over here, after adding everything together, I know that that resultant force is down and to the left. The x component has a value of 2.9 times 10 to the negative 5 to the left, and a y component of 4.3 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons downwards. So you need to find out what is our theta and what is our resultant vector. So what is our overall resultant? So to do that, we just do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So 2.9 squared plus 4.3 squared square root. We end up with 5.2 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. We do inverse tan of 4.3 divided by 2.9. That's why I'm speaking of it. I know that I'm not I'm actually... And plugging in the 10 to the negative 5 into my calculator because I just know my resultant vector is also going to be 10 to the negative 5. When I do inverse tan, I know this 10 to the negative 5 is going to cancel out. So inverse tan, 4.3, divided by 2.9, we get a value of 56 degrees south of west.